Hello everyone, time for another training log, and I got this one under 20 minutes. That is the first time in a while, so hopefully you guys enjoy this workout. Started off with some squats, Glenn being brave again, jumping 20 pounds from last week, doing 5x5 five five with 265 pounds, and he is just rocking the squats. This is the best his form has looked. I've mentioned that a couple of times now, but I just can't get over how quickly he's coming back on the squat. You'll notice here on this first set, he decided he wanted to go no belt, use his core, ignore the discomfort from his scar, and he did it. Nice five easy reps, no problems there. You can see our breath coming out nice and white. It is definitely winter now. We got really lucky and we were having a lot of days around 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we are consistently Good. down in the 20s. So for those of you in Celsius, uh, 32 Fahrenheit oh, is freezing. So we are below zero Celsius on a daily Four, basis when we're out here training. So definitely a lot of clothing going on there it's causing some different leverages things like that Glenn says is making the belt fit a little bit tighter which I don't know if that's the belt or him just coming back and lifting so as I mentioned I am doing 531 again on the squats and this is my first set on uh, the 531 day so doing five reps at 330 pounds and I am going to be doing 5 through 1 for a while. I'm going to also be doing that on my deadlift for most of the sessions here going forward. Glenn, on now on his third set, you notice we move the camera off to the side. And that is so that we can do a depth check. We always want to make sure that we are checking our depth periodically. So you can see there, uh, Glenn is trying to get his hip crease below the top of his knees and he is doing that now that is a legal squat although it does worry me in the USAPL they are pretty strict about judging and they actually want you to go a little bit below parallel so that's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on but uh, just using the eyes here that is legal now I'm beginning my second set 370 pounds this is the triple so you can see there again looking for the hip crease or where your thigh meets your hip on the top to the top of the knee and I'm going and breaking that so just a little, a little parallel which is what I want to see and again might have problems in the USAPL let me know what you guys think how did our depth look for Glenn and me would you think we'd have any problems in uh, USAPL, which is also uh, the IPF, they're the affiliate here in the US? What do you think Dude. would happen? Glenn on the sports set, no problems. He is okay. getting all of his reps tonight with no issue, even though he decided to take a 20 well, pound jump. Driving by us, huh? And it is obviously taking it out of him, taxing him Drive. a little bit, oh. but everything's oh. still looking good. What we were really looking for with Glenn is, is he falling forward? That's where he was having a lot of problems. Now this is my one plus set with uh, 415 pounds, 188 kilograms, somewhere around there. And first one felt really good. Second one went a little bit slower, but still felt all right. Third one was definitely starting to slow me down. And this fourth one, uh, this I didn't like. You see there, I started to lean forward a little bit. So for me, I wasn't really happy with that. I called it. Put the weights back and uh, just really disappointed in that. I really wanted to get five or more reps, but I'm going to blame the diet. And as long as I am on a diet, that is going to be a valid excuse. I know it shouldn't be, but it's going to be. I'm sticking to that uh, going forward until I do quit the diet. And Glenn here on his last set, still looking good. You can see now he is getting a little bit deeper there. 
Drive. And I think oh. a lot of that's just getting really comfortable and warmed up with the weight now. It is very difficult for us Drive. to get oh. warm and Drive. stay warm with it being as cold as it is. And I could have done Joker sets. I didn't really feel like doing Joker sets. Instead, I decided to go for another set with 415 on the one plus. So I just was so unhappy with the first performance. I decided to go again. But you can already see there. I'm starting to slow down after the second rep. Third rep's pretty slow. But I was thinking to myself, there was no way that I was going to do less reps on the second one. And the fourth one was slow, but I was happy with it. I did not fall forward. It was heavy, but eight total reps at 415 is not bad. It's not where I should be. And this is something we really wanted to try. Uh, breathing slash long pause sets. Uh, this is very challenging. And if you're just looking for something to do in training, give these a shot. I think the 1-2 pause or the 1-2-3 pause are a little bit more applicable to one, your two, training, three, just doing a short four, pause five, to make sure that you're training oh. the upward portion of the yeah, lift okay. without a stretch reflex. Four. But Good. these are a different animal. <laughs> these are teaching you, especially if you do it breathing, to hold everything tight while breathing. And that is going to be a One, skill that I think two, is going three, to carry over four, into five, Strongman up. quite well. Because you can't do a long farmer's walk or a long yoke One, walk two, without breathing. Three, you have to hold four, the weight five, and the up. yoke on the ah. top of your traps just like a squat. You have to be able to hold that while breathing One, and walking. Two, so three, I think this will four, have some good carryover. Five, You'll notice I'm only using 315 <laughs> and it is killing me. That was very difficult. A lot more challenging than I thought it would be. And here we go, the shorter pause. Glenn up, uh, he's keeping the weight at 225. One, two, up. But we're just keeping the pause, as I said, a little bit more applicable to One, power two, lifting. Up. And I will be making a short video on this shortly, but I really disappointed. I posted all that one, one. my goals that I want to do the powerlifting competition in April. One, I two, didn't look up. up the date until this week, and notice that is oh. on the same day as my daughter's birthday. So obviously, I am going to be going to my daughter's birthday party. And I am a daddy first, lifter second. So I'm one, going to have two, to do up. a different powerlifting meet. Right now, there looks like there is one in March. One, that two, might be a up. little bit too early. We will see how I feel. As I said, I wanted to one, get my weight two, down up. below 265. So I think towards the end of the February, I will be able to make a one, better call two, on that. Up. If not, I'm going to keep you guys posted and try and let you know when I'm going one, to be able two, to do up. that powerlifting competition. But I'm hoping April or June, uh, somewhere in between there, maybe May. And I just nice. left this in here. Uh, we were having some trouble with these blocks. We decided to do calf raises of all things. Glenn being dangerous. And we had done these the week prior with 185 pounds, and both Glenn and I were just dying. Our calves were so sore. And the reason we're putting blocks in there is to get that extra range of motion that otherwise you wouldn't be getting in your calf muscle. We don't have a calf machine or anything like that, so this is just how we do it. Put the blocks up there, makes it so you can get a pretty nice range of motion. But both Glenn and I were having some problems with our balance, and I think that's something that we're going to just have to get used to. But it was definitely a very intense workout for the calves, even though it was 225. We just haven't done these in so long. I will tell you that I was still sore. And for me, these feel really awkward because I did tear something in my left calf in 2013 not sure exactly what it was but that's one of the few lifting injuries that i actually have was tearing my left calf so my right calf feels like it does most of the work and i think because the calf muscles are imbalanced due to the injury i 
am losing my balance from one side. So I just sped these next two sets up here. Uh, obviously, everybody doesn't really care about calves, right? We don't need to watch it in slow motion and see every single rep here. But the goal was to do three sets of ten, and I hit them. Glenn had problems in that second set where he fell forward, and he just didn't want to pull it back out. Then I'm yawning because it is really late, and I am trying to do this commentary, and I am not going to edit that out because we have come too far now come too far and now we're finally into the benching session so one of the things with doing all that squatting before benching is it really tires out your legs so we are not gonna have the best leg drive here but Glenn decided to be brave he took a 10 pound jump instead of the 5 pound jump so he is now at 215 and he's gonna do the 5 sets of 5 and uh, just through one set in here uh, this is sped up double speed here with the one arm T-bar row and these were just feeling so heavy tonight I'm not sure why so we just did one set of these between the benches and decided that we would just do more back work later on in the week because we wanted to get out at this point it has dropped quite a bit in temperature and we just wanted to to get out now you'll notice one thing that is different Glenn pulls a lot higher than I do you can see here I'm trying to stay closer to 90 degrees with the floor get a different angle in the back and I am setting it down to the ground after each rep that may or may not be a good thing I don't know we'll see I think all back work does the same type of work. You know, you're, you're working a lot of muscles in your back, whether you're pulling horizontally or vertically, whether you're doing single arm, double arm, it's all going to work your traps and your lats to some extent, and it's all good. You want to hit all the different variations body English, no body English, whatever you got to do, get some back work in there and do it right make sure that if you are using body English you're doing it heavy enough to work the back still and if you're not using body English or you don't want to make sure the weights are light enough that you can get it done and this is my 5x5 five five with 255 so you can see Glenn's already got two sets in there it looks pretty good before I get my first set so that's gonna kinda of throw us off here but this was an interesting night for benching I am just so sore. I, my elbows are killing me. My shoulders killing me. Uh, definitely the diet is taking its toll finally. I am not getting as much fat in the diet. I'm not getting as many calories. My recovery is gone way down. And my joints are starting to feel it. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out into the next week. I think I'm going to end up taking a deload. Just try and get a little bit of weight off of me and get those joints feeling a little bit better so I can come back and crush this weight. Man, I'm yawning again. Oh, I can't do this when it's late, guys. Oh, so I apologize. Apologize. Glenn here now with his fourth set. You can see there he's getting some, some good leg drive. He's got some really good bar speed in this. Still getting a little bit of a problem where he is leaning to the side. And because of that, the bar is going a little bit more on the right side than in the center. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to fix that. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that his lower back muscles um, coming up through his erector spinning muscles are uneven on one side to the other so that may or may not be playing a part with the bench obviously if you're laying down on something that's uneven you're gonna have the tendency to lean to that side Glenn here with the fifth set first one just really good bar speed second one still good bar speed and I think he is going to catch up to me in the bench very quickly he is definitely getting this bar moving right whereas I'm having a lot of trouble and he is already starting to remind me that 
he's not dieting so he gets to eat everything he needs to to recover in between each session and where he was sore before now he's not having as many problems because he's just eating a lot and Glenn now moving into his first set of triples jumped the weight up to 245 so that is a 30 pound jump after doing the 5x5 five five, which is very very challenging the 5x5 five five should be challenging and that would normally be all we would do but we want to handle some heavy weights in there before we quit for the night so here's my last set with the 5x5 five five, still at 255 pounds here and not really happy or disappointed in the bar speed just it is what it is definitely still need to work on some speed there Glenn now with his second set of triples and now all the bar speed is gone you see it's heavy and that third one he started coming off the bench with his butt a little bit so we'll give him the rep, but obviously in a competition you're not going to be able to do that. Got to make sure that your butt cheeks stay in contact with the bench. Now part of it can come off so long as something is still in contact with the bench. And you will notice there I only got two reps. So I am failing the 3x3 three three again at 290 not getting a triple so I'm gonna try this one more time next bench session I'm not gonna up it to 295 till I can get that three sets of three but it may finally have reached that point where I'm not gonna be able to do triples after doing that much five by five the five by five is actually getting challenging my last set here you can see the set before this my triceps are just done but me being hard-headed I wanted to do the last one, get a double, and it was hard. But that's it, everyone. Go lift something heavy.